Hello everyone, it's Amity Sensei. Today I'll be teaching you how to create typography. Creating graphical designs using letter is called typography, or also known as lettering, and I'll be showing you how to create them on iPad. Today we'll be using an app called Procreate. It's an app that costs around $12, but I highly suggest having it downloaded if you haven't. Today we'll be referring to designs like this one, where we create a border around the letters, color inside the letters, make the letters gradient, and create similar designs on Procreate. We are all in very stressful times now due to coronavirus, and this is why I wanted to create designs like this saying wash your hands. I'm hoping to remind people to wash hands once they get back home through creative postures, which I plan to post on my social media as well. It would be great if you could create your own design with me today and watch this video until the end. Okay, let's begin. On Procreate, there is a plus button at the top right corner, so click on that to create a new canvas. Today we'll be using the canvas called Screen Size. First, we'll start by writing the letters. But regarding the brush type, I have a set of customized brushes I created, and I'll be using them today. I mentioned this before, but I have this script brush set with 16 different brushes. And if you use this, you can draw really cool letters, so check them out if you're interested. Today we'll be using the 16th brush called C Turtle Brush in the script brush set. A tip for drawing letters here is that don't be afraid of drawing the letters too big on your canvas in the first place and try to make use of the entire space like this. You can adjust the letter size as many times as you want later. You do have to think about the balance and layer of each letter when drawing on an actual piece of paper. And even though you may have experienced drawing letters too big in the beginning and ending up having them being too small in the end, you don't have to worry about it here. Digital art enables you to make changes anytime, so don't overthink it and draw. I myself make a lot of mistakes all the time like this. So it's always erasing and drawing over and over. Once you're done drawing the letters, let's adjust the size. Click on the arrow at the top and shrink the size of the letters. Don't try to fill up the entire canvas with the letters and try to leave an even amount of margin on all four sides to create a classy and neat design. If you want to adjust the size of a letter, then use the selection tool. The selection tool can be found at the top left, second to from the right, and so click on that. Then, for example, if you want to change the size of the letter R, outline the letter and click on the arrow again and you'll be able to move, rotate, and hide it. Now you can repeat the process to adjust the size and position of each letter. Also, by changing the position of the letters to align with the line below the letters, called the baseline, you can create a great design overall. The letter S here should be placed a little higher, and now that I move it up, the baseline for her hands seems aligned. Making these small changes like aligning the invisible baseline helps create a neat design. Now I'll be adding some color and decorations to the design, but before I do that, I'll be changing the color of the letters to white. But if I do that, it will blend in with the background so change the background color to gray first. Just a little bit will be good. So add a new layer on top and bring it under the layer with the letters. Now on to how to change the color of the letters. When you tap this, there should be an option that says invert. So click on that and the color should invert. So for example, if the original color is black, it will turn white. If it's blue, then it will turn yellow. If it's red, then it will turn orange. Once you change the color, we will add a black border surrounding the letters. Select the brush called a Studio Pen, which can be found in the inking section, and now we will start in edges. This brush lets you draw smooth curves, so we will be using this brush to draw the borders.
A tip for joining the edges is try to make the thickness of these edges as even as you can. Because if some parts are thin while other parts are thick, they'll look a little distorted. So try to adjust them as evenly as possible. I'm done with the edges, but if you take a closer look, some of the white parts seem transparent, with the black part showing through. So to make it solid white, duplicate this layer, and as you copy the layer by swiping left, you should see a new layer added on top of it. So click on the layer at the top, and there's an option to merge at the bottom. This will combine two layers together to form a single layer, or the solid white layer in this case. So it can be a great idea to use these hacks when necessary. Also, make sure to color the parts in black completely. Now we will be coloring inside the letters. To do this, we will be adding a new layer on top and coloring that layer. But before that, I want to introduce you to different types of brushes. First, there is a brush called Nebula in the box called Brightness. This brush is pretty interesting, so I'm going to show you how it looks right now. As you can see, it can create magical and space-like expression. Also, what's impressive here is that Procreate automatically changes the color based on your pen pressure. So the stronger it gets, the more whitish in color it creates, and the weaker it gets, the more bluish in color it creates. It's quite an interesting brush. Once you're done with coloring, you can see that the color is running over the letters. But you can use this tool called Clipping Mask that can be found in the settings to make sure it doesn't run over the letters. Click on the layer and you can find the Clipping Mask here. So tap it and it should look as if you only color inside the letters. We call it a Clipping Mask, so remember how to use this tool. If you want to try different expressions, then create a new layer from the plus button. And as we did earlier, choose a different brush, Boca Light for instance. And roughly trace them here like this. Then click on the layer and select Clipping Mask. And it should look as if you only color inside the letters. Here you can compare two different brushes, Nebula and Boca Light in this case, by clicking on the Show and Hide option. So you can use this tool to compare different textures and decide which one you want to use. Another option is this one called Splatter, which can be found in a spray box. It looks a lot like water. You can also change the color and use a different color to color on top of each other. There is also this one called Splattering Water in the watercolor box, which is also really cool because you can quickly draw water droplets. If you try to have handwritten water droplets, it will be such a hassle, but by using this brush, you can draw them instantly. This time, we will be using this brush called Aurora in the artistic box. Aurora looks like this, and it changes its color depending on the pen pressure. It kind of looks as if crystals are sprinkled all over the place. When you make a brush bigger, it looks like this. It's got some paint elements to it too, I think. We will be using this to paint, but make sure to tap the layer here and clip the mask before coloring. It's easier this way because you can color without running over the edges from the start. Once you're done, delete the layers you don't need anymore. To do so, select multiple by swiping right and tap delete at the top. And they're gone. It looks pretty simple now. Add a new layer at the top here. We are going to add more white elements. I'm going to use a studio pen to create some handwritten water droplets.
I'm almost done now, but at last I'm going to add a little more decoration of water droplets. Before that though, let's group layers. When doing so, select multiple, swipe right on each layer that you want to group together, and tap the group option which can be found at the top right. Now they're put together as a single group, so add a new layer on top of it. Once you group them together, it makes it easier for you to refer to them later on. Now lower the opacity for the bottom layer, wash your hands, to around 80%. Then click on a new layer. I'll be drawing a water droplet pattern here, but I'm first going to draw a rough draft using a pencil brush in pink. Once you're done with your draft, Lower the opacity of this layer a little to the point where you can still see the pink color. Then, add a new layer on top. I will now use a studio pen to draw the water droplets by drawing over the pink lines I just drew. Like this, I'm going to keep on drawing. Next, add a black border to the water droplets. Add a new layer at the top. Long tap it to bring it down below here. Here we'll be drawing the black border, but we have to adjust the settings first to do that as well. So lower the opacity of the layer at the very bottom, the black one. Click on N and change the opacity to around 70%. Now we're all set. Use a studio pen in black and start coloring around these water droplets. Since we lowered the opacity of the bottom layer earlier, it's now a lot easier for us to draw as we can see the black part better. Like this you can draw nicely by adding decorations on top of each layer after lowering the opacity of the layer to make things visible. You may not be familiar with the use of layers, especially if you're a beginner, but I've made many videos showing you how to use layers in Procreate. So check them out from the playlist called Procreate and come back here and give it a try when you're ready. Alright, it's complete. All I did was simply draw some letters, draw a border around the letters, and color inside them. It's pretty straightforward, so I believe anyone can do these things. If you want to change the color of this layer, where you color using the clipping mask earlier for instance, go to the adjustment panel and then click on hue, saturation, and brightness. Then you should see a color palette where you can make adjustments using the sliders to change the color. So if you want to make last minute changes, use this tool. There's also this thing called Curve, which is a tool for advanced users, but you can adjust the contrast of the color using the curvy lines here too. Okay, we're done. What do you think? I wanted to create a logo-like typography, and I think I did a pretty good job. This wash your hands typography is actually one of the assignments that I assign my iPad Make community members. And I've been seeing so many amazing works so far. For example, this was from Yusung. These letters got water like looks, and they look so ziggly and cute. Also, Sekiyu-san. I wonder what was used to create this design. I'm assuming it's Affinity Designer. It's pretty cute that Sekiyu-san used a water design for the letters. Also, Saki-san. It's a 3D version of Wash Your Hands. And Satun-san. Satun-san's design is also very elaborate. Satun-san's works are always amazing. I don't think I'm nearly as good as Satun-san when it comes to design skills. I really like how you can still see the hands peeking from the back. 
I'm always impressed by everyone's design. Also, Gontaro-san, there is this technique called cut effect, and he used that to create this washing hands design. And Megumi-san as well. Megumi-san is really good at typography, and she does a lot of letter designs, and I'm always inspired by her works. You can see a lot more in my iPad Mac community. In this community, I always look at everyone's design and give comments on them. So if you want to do something creative and learn new things at home, then it would be great if you check out my iPad Mac community. Regarding the wash your hands design we created today, you can create your own design and post it on social media using the hashtag wash your hands. I will check the hashtag and look at your work later, so it will be great if you do that. Regardless of the current situation we are facing right now, there are a lot of things we can do at home and it would be nice if you could do something creative together every day. I will continue uploading many videos on YouTube, so please subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos. That's all for today, and please give a thumbs up if you like this video. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye!